afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you all to today's award, annual award celebration and ceremony. I'm going to first thank our wonderful musicians. Here they are, members, the trio from our very own Rochester Symphony. Amy Lindstrom on the violin, Luke McSannick on the violin, and Rachel Botner on the cello. So thank you so much for this absolutely gorgeous music. And I do want to tell you, a number of people stopped me along the way and said, who are they? They're fabulous. So I feel like I should give a commercial. If you all aren't going to our symphony, you should buy tickets and go, because they're fabulous. So thank you so much. So the Mayor's Medal of Honor is an annual celebration. This is the 40th year we've been doing this. And since that time, we have had 483 Medal of Honor awardees. 483. And today we're going to put that very near 500. And I think a couple things, I want to give some logistics before we kick it off. This is a really wonderful event. You will hear stories and meet people who do things in our community that you're not even aware are going on around you. Um, that's been my experience every year, and I feel like I know a lot of people. There's a lot of people quietly doing wonderful work in this community. So I hope you enjoy um, the next hour. There will be food served throughout the the time here, so please just eat or we'll never get out of here. So I just want you to feel very comfortable doing that and also let you know that we'll be videotaping. And so as um, the award recipients come up and you want to take pictures, you can do so, but if you would stay um, out off to the sides, that would be helpful for the videotaping so that they can have a record of, of their awardees. And some of you probably are starting to realize um, that there are a lot of people in this room that aren't sure why they're here. And that's by design. It's been done that way every year uh, since I've been around. So some of you are being awarded. Some of you are here to celebrate other people being awarded. And some of you are here because you're past recipients. And so because um, through the whole time we've been sitting here, if you've had a chance to look at the screen, those 40 years worth of 483 recipients' names have been running on that screen. So in this room today are some former Mayor's Medal of Honor winners. Um, and so if you have ever been awarded a Mayor's Medal of Honor since 40 years, would you please stand up so we can congratulate and recognize you? There's, come on, stand up. There we go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It, it's uh, truly remarkable. Their stories were remarkable. I know some of them 25 years or more, um, and they're fabulous people, and you will meet some more in just a few moments. So at the end of the award, everyone's welcome to take pictures of your, your family, friend, or neighbor that might be getting an award today. Um, and, but at the end, if you please could stay the, the winners, we do want to get a group picture and individual pictures um, for the press that will be, um, they've been asking for that, so I'm going to ask that you do that. But before we start the formal program, I had hoped there would be two individuals that we could um, recognize today at the 40th anniversary, and we're only going to be able to do one, unfortunately. Um, but um, the two individuals were former mayors. There are only three of us alive. Um, in the in the city of, uh, past mayors of the city of Rochester, and so I am thrilled to have Mayor Dewey Day here, and I would like Mayor Day, if you're willing to come up, um, to be recognized. Would you come up? This is Dewey Day. Dewey, come here. Dewey Day was mayor of Rochester in 1969 to 1973, and Dewey, if you're not afraid to say so, how old are you? Clo 70, okay, he's 70. <laughs> it's easy for them to find out how old I am, so I'm going on 91. So Dewey is 91 years old, and he has joined us today, and, um, and actually got up there on the stage um, Quite easily. We're gonna, I'm going to make sure you get down safely, too. I don't want uh, any accidents on my watch. But I just wanted everyone to recognize Dewey Day for his part in serving this community. And um, I have a, a 
a gift for him. I'm just going to get it quickly. So we're going to honor um, Mayor Day with a plant, which maybe we could leave up here till the end because he may not want to carry it with him. I, I got something to say. I, I was very honored today. I'll tell the mayor one of the biggest things for us folks is that I, I did vote for her twice. <laughs> That was very sweet. Yeah. I didn't pay him to say that. <laughs> uh, so this is just says, in recognition of the 40th anniversary of the Mayor's Medal of Honor, we're today honoring Dewey Day for his service and dedication to the Rochester community. He's getting, which he, if he doesn't have one, he, he certainly should, a key to the city, yeah. right? He should have one. And also um, a piece of original art. It's a limited edition that was done by one of our local artists um, in honor of this is the state of Minnesota, if you can tell. There it is. Uh, to take home to, to uh, we just wanted to offer him our thanks for his years of service. Thank so you thank you, Mayor Day. I just get a hold right here and I'm on my way to Texas in a couple of years. I'm jealous. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor Day. And Ardell Brady was going to be here and unfortunately came yesterday. He had gotten the day wrong. So he was here to be recognized, and I will make sure that his um, plant and recognition get to him as well. Um, I do want uh, Michonne Rogers, who is probably hiding in the front, but if Michonne could be brought in, please. Could you get Michonne? So if you don't know, Michonne Rogers is the other part of my office, it's two of us, um, I, the mayor and she's the mayor, help. She's the second mayor. Mayor, if you, Michonne, please. Come up here. Michonne has been with me since I started in the mayor's office and some of you, I know Wanda Hedquist knows this. Michonne was the um, executive administrator for the superintendent of schools when I was on the school board. So we go way, way back. That was like in another lifetime. And my office could not run without her. And so I didn't want to um, leave today without you understanding. And when you call, this is who you talk to, is Michonne. And then, then sometimes you get to me. <laughs> um, and Michonne is the one that makes everything work. And she's the one that does all the work to make today possible. So I wanted to recognize Michonne. And I wanted to thank her for tolerating me. It's been a, a tough couple years with the pandemic and all the stress that we've all been under. So she's managed it all. So thank you, Michonne. She said she thought she was in trouble. <laughs> Never. So thank you, Michonne. So now we're going to begin the program. Sorry for that little pause, but I really, I really did want to um, honor some people that uh, are special and are here today. So um, we're going to begin. And on the slide, I believe you will see the recipient the, the title for the uh, award. The first award we'll be giving out is the Artistic Cultural Achievement Award. And Barath Wootla is going to read the um, nomination and we will surprise the winner. Thank you, Mayor Norton. So this honoree has organized and created many public art projects, engaging with and lifting up youth and other artists in our community. The following is a quote from this artist's personal statement. Community is everywhere, where we choose to live, who we choose to be with, and how we define ourselves. It can represent a small group of a few or an entire nation. Community can give us a sense of safety and belonging, support us and help us through difficult times. She uses her time and energy to build community through art. During the pandemic, she spent her energy taking part in an Our Neighbors initiative adding public murals to neighborhoods. She helped with the training for artists new to grant writing and worked with the Meadow Park Neighbors, Family Service Rochester, and United Way to create a four panel mural incorporating the neighbors, different countries of origin, and what home means and looks like. Recently, this artist received her master's in education from Hamline University. Her graduate thesis project was creating an online diverse and inclusive list of Minnesota artists, resources, and lessons for educators and students. She has written multiple grants to work with schools such as ALC on a sculpture class, as well as Gage Elementary on the many hands mosaics funded by CIMAC. In 2021, 
this individual started a nonprofit, the small, uh, small Art Gallery, which is a little free library, but for art. There are three mini galleries in Rochester, two in the neighborhoods and one in a hotel that highlight individual local artists. Currently, she's creating a community engaged and ocean themed mosaic for the Soldiers Field Pool House with youth from Apex High School, Riverside Elementary, IMA Arts, uh, IMA fourth graders, ALC, and John Marshall High School. In addition, she's involved with Open Table Food Mission and the community public art event, Chalk the Block. As you have heard now, this artist is passionate about art, youth, and the kind of community that works together for a common purpose. Her many years in service to art and youth in Rochester has empowered current and future artists, making Rochester a richer and more creative city. Please help me honor Mary Beth McGuire for the artistic and cultural achievement. Congratulations. I, I want to inform folks that the awards um, nominees, nominations were taken from anyone in the community who wanted to give them. Um, some of the nominators are here today. And last year's winners, some of whom are speaking, as you just heard, and not all of them could be here, also were the ones who made the selections based on the nearly 100 nominations that we got. So just want you to know that. The next category is the Champion of Diversity Award. Uh, we were going to have um, Mr. Baker do the nomination, but he was unable to be here, and I hear he has a replacement. So could the speaker or the nom nominator for, oh, here we are, thank you, for the Champion of Diversity Award um, is gonna give a few words. Hello. My name is Amanda Niggin Crowley. I'm honored to be here on behalf of Sean Baker. And these are his words, but I will read them to you. Regarding Mr. Kim Sin, or oh, I'm not supposed to announce that. Okay. This honoree <laughs> embodies everything about the Champion of, of Diversity Award. As one of the founders of the village, he has worked to help immigrant communities grow culturally relevant crops while emphasizing sustainable agricultural practices. These urban farms provide people not only access to land, but the dignity to be able to carry on traditions of food, community, and health. In addition to his work with the village, he has worked tirelessly to promote the local Cambodian community by planning community cultural events and volunteering on efforts to support area youth, seniors, and nonprofit organizations. By day, he works at the University of Minnesota Rochester where he supports IT efforts for students and staff. We have seen his dedication to his work close up as a former collaborator in the university's community collab program. He is a tireless champion for sustainability, diversity, and education. Please help me recognize Kim Sin as a champion of diversity. <laughs> Melina and Cambria, can you? His daughters are here to accept the award. And Kim's families are coming up, but you can see his picture on the screen behind, and we're very sorry he couldn't make it today. <laughs> the next award we're going to be giving is called the Community Wide Service Award, and I would invite Chris Acuna, who is the nominator, to come up and say a few words. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. My name is Chris Acuna. Uh, I would like to nominate a group whose work transcends the usual <clears throat> boundaries that label biking merely a, as a health or environmental initiative. Instead, they have demonstrated the potential of bicycles as accessible transportation solution for those in our community who might not otherwise be able to afford them. Their accomplishments speak volumes. They've restored over 250 bicycles, clocking in an impressive 820 volunteer hours. I, should, I guess I should name who uh, before I 
go into this whole thing. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to recognize the Pata de Perro and volunteer bike mechanics from We Bike Rochester. They've restored over 250 bikes, um, clocking over 820 volunteer hours. Uh, what's most admirable, admirable is not just the sheer number of bikes, but the number and effort, but the heart and effort behind every hour spent. A striking example of their dedication is the revival of 72 orange former bike share bikes. The amount of detail and attention, averaging two to four hours for each bike, showcases their commitment. One volunteer alone dedicated 162 hours, along with the mechanic team, amassing an astounding 382 hours prepping bikes for distribution. Moreover, Pata de Perro workshops not only aided in the bicycle distributions, but also provided valuable repair services to the community, totaling an estimated 276 hours. At just $30 a bike, their efforts have resulted in over 300 bikes being directly donated to community members over the last year. Beyond this, every Thursday evening throughout the summer, They've hosted workshops aiding an average of 12 bike owners each time, translating to assistance for over 240 bikes in 20 weeks. Their work symbolizes more than just repairing and donating bikes. It's about bridging gaps, ensuring accessibility, and fostering community spirit. And it's high time their selfless efforts and their role in reshaping how we view biking in their community, <clears throat> how we view biking in the community uh, and get the spotlight they deserve. This community-wide service award is a fitting recognition for a group that has worked tirelessly for the betterment of our community. Help me recognize Pata de Perro, a program of We Bike Rochester, and uh, the volunteer bike mechanics, Paul Klaus, Ed Den Denbau, Bill Marshall, Jeff Thompson, Miguel Valdez, Ken White, Tom Williamson, and Enrique Zavala Roca. Uh, accepting on behalf of Pata de Perro will be Paul Klaus. have a policy of no groups, but sometimes you just have to be flexible. And that was definitely one. So thank you so much for that nomination. Next up is the Educational Excellence Award. I would like Sarah Coffing to come up, please. Hi, my name is Sarah Coffing, and I am a teacher at Falwell Elementary School. The honoree that I am honoring today is most deserving of the Educational Excellence Award. He's been my teaching partner for over 13 years. And I can personally attest to the dedication he has for his students and continuously honing his craft. He works tirelessly to meet the needs of each of his students, not just academically, but behaviorally and emotionally as well. He can frequently be found spending his lunch with his kids, taking the time to get, each, to, get to know each one of them intimately. He has a wonderful way of making each of his students feel special and loved. This honoree is a consummate professional who's always looking for something new and exciting to help his class learn. He deservedly has been honored as a Post Bulletin Teacher of the Month and was a finalist for Minnesota Teacher of the Year. He spends many nights and weekends attending current and past students' extracurricular activities and events and volunteers his time at high school sporting events. Another nominator notes that Mr. Olson has fun lessons, and they're very enjoyable. Students are never bored in his class. He makes everything fun and special. Yet another nominator shared that this honoree instituted the beloved annual Falwell tradition of uniting our fifth graders with adults living in Bear Creek group homes for meal and conversation. This experience teaches students that people are more similar than different, even if someone has disabilities. Everyone in attendance has the opportunity to learn more about inclusivity, kindness, and treating each other with respect, tenets that this honoree puts into practice every day. Please help me welcome Michael Olson, truly exemplifies educational excellence. It's 
Falwell's birthday today. Okay, I just have to say, Michael will be embarrassed, but I've known Michael since he was a tiny little boy. And his mother and I were PTA presidents of his elementary school together. And it has been an absolute joy to know him as a, a little boy, a young man, and now a wonderful, talented teacher. So congratulations. Okay, it's not good to get emotional, but I will tell you, um, I've had the pleasure of giving one of the awards uh, to an awardee who is not here, and you'll hear about her in a little bit. I had to go to her home yesterday. I didn't have to. I got to go to her home yesterday. And I think between the two of us, we, we both shed some tears. It was delightful. Um, this next one is Excellence in Service Award, and I'm going to uh, read the uh, nomination. This honoree has served the city with distinction for 29 years. During that time, he served a dual role of finance director and as the head of information technology at the city of Rochester. As finance director, he supervised the financial department staff and served as the key financial officer to the city administrator, mayor, and city council for all the diverse financial matters of the city. That included his advice and assistance in preparation of the annual city budget. Imagine that hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, sorry about that. <laughs> he smiles. Millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. The issuance of municipal bonds, multiple extensions of the city's local sales tax, thank you all for your support of the last one, and input into economic development agreements for the improvements of the downtown to create new jobs and to provide affordable housing. Throughout the, his tenure, he played a lead role in maintaining the city of Rochester's AAA bond rating, the highest rating provided for local governments. And there are very few cities that have that. And due to this gentleman's service, we're one of them. Since 2013, he was appointed as the assistant treasurer to the Destination Medical Center board, providing financial oversight for that board as well. As the head of the information technology staff, he was responsible for the tremendous increase in growth of information technology services to provide for the most efficient workforce for the various departments in our city. Even with this significant workload, he was always a pleasure to work with, having both a calm demeanor and a very quick sense of humor. So thank you for smiling when I said thousands instead of millions. Aside from his professional accomplishments, this honoree values his family it is an, and it is an avid adventurer with a plethora of hobbies, including boating, kayaking, camping, skiing, flying, and more. His legacy will be felt for many generations in Rochester, and I would like you to please join me in honoring Mr. Dale Martinson for his excellence in city service. Congratulations. Very well deserved. Our next award is Excellence in Industry, and I'm going to invite Aaron Benneke, a 2022 honoree, up to read um, this nomination. Before I put my glasses on, I just want to en enjoy seeing the room here. What a cool uh, cross-section of what makes Rochester really, really great. Excellence in Industry Award. One nominator shared that this honoree is a dedicated team member who truly represents excellence within hospitality. As a corporate executive chef, he upholds the responsibility of creating a captivating culinary experience. Whether he's developing diet conscious meals for patients staying at the hotel or providing thoughtful quarterly employee luncheons he goes above and beyond to accommodate the desires and palates of many with diverse cultural backgrounds. Additionally, this honoree spends holidays, Thanksgivings and Christmas, at the hotel cooking for guests who are unable to make the travel home, many of who are patients at Mayo Clinic. In, in thinking about Mayo's bold, forward, unbound announcement this week, these are 
the things that make Rochester America's city for health and a destination for health and innovation. It's important. Another nominee noted that this past Thanksgiving, this honoree has led the culinary efforts to feed those who are experiencing homelessness at the landing. He's also volunteered at the Salvation Army, the Veterans Museum, and for the city events such as Safe City Nights. These experiences demonstrate his deep-seated sense of social responsibility. Yet another nominator shared that equally important is this honoree's role as a mentor and a leader within the community. He has not only shared his culinary knowledge and expertise generously, but has also been an advocate for the professional development of those around him in food safety and healthy eating habits. His ability to inspire and guide others is a testament to his leadership qualities. With his unrivaled work ethic and unwavering devotion to his professional responsibilities, this honoree's relentless pursuit of excellence sets a perpetual beacon of inspiration for his peers, superiors, the Rochester community, and the Mayo Clinic employees and patients alike. And I am personally impressed with this honoree's lifelong dedication to his industry, making several large leaps and risks during his career, moving around the world. And I think that Rochester is lucky that he has selected Rochester to be his home. Please help me recognize Mr. Rajesh Govindasamy for Excellence in Industry Award. Thank you. both. I told him I expected him to be much older after that long and <laughs> lovely career. Um, next, we have the Heroism Award, and I would like Sarah Ness, who is the nominator, to come up and make some comments, please. Um, I am Sarah Ness. I am the proud daughter of one of the recipients of this award today, and um, just wanted to tell a little story. Um, back on the fateful day of Saturday, May 6, 2023, Four individuals demonstrated unwavering courage and selflessness at the Olmsted County Recycling Center, where their actions undoubtedly saved a life. A customer suffered a sudden cardiac arrest at the Olmsted County Recycling Center. In the dire situation, employees came together as a remarkable team, displaying extraordinary bravery and remarkable composure. First and foremost, one of the employees was trained in CPR. They wasted no time in applying life-saving skills to start chest compressions. Um, his immediate response played a pivotal role in keeping the victim's blood circulating and sustaining their life while further help arrived. The employer's knowledge and quick actions um, served as an inspiring example of the importance of CPR training. Additional staff members also deserve immense recognition in their instrumental role in this heroic effort. They promptly swept the customer's mouth to check for choking, called 911, and retrieved the AED to administer shocks to the customer's heart. Following the device's instructions with precision, their calm and efficient actions in this high-pressure situation were indispensable in the victim's survival. The synergy between these individuals is awe-inspiring. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. Um, as they work collaboratively and effectively as a team. Um, this heroism is, I can't even read my piece of paper anymore. I'm just so proud of them. Uh, <laughs> um, it just shows that collaboration is really key in these situations and um, we're so happy that this person is alive and um, I just want to recognize the proud staff at the Olmsted County Environmental Resources Department. Bruce Kiefer, Steve Tupper, Caleb Alisadi, can't read my paper, Mike Patzner and Bruce or Pete McIntyre for their efforts. And um, I am super proud and I know the community is super proud of you too. So um, Kaylid, if you would come up and accept this award.
Human Services Award is next, and I would like April Souter, the nominator, to step forward, please. Good afternoon, everyone. The Meadow Park Learning Center is a four-year partnership between Friendship Place and Family Service Rochester, delivering youth enrichment and academic support in the Meadow Park neighborhood. The Learning Center youth describe this honoree as amazing, an awesome person, caring, and the best person in the world. A Rochester native, this honoree worked for Rochester Public Schools for 18 years and has been instrumental with Friendship Place for the past 20 years, providing academic support, technology, language learning, a neighborhood welcome center, outdoor activities for immigrants and refugees. Their love for cultures and people from different backgrounds and countries shows in this person's volunteering who gives from the heart. This nominee says, through this partnership, we are able to open up the rest of the world for youth and families with amazing activities. This nominee um, is fondly known in the neighborhood as Mr. Parker. While he shies away from attention, and yes, Greg, you do need to come up here. <laughs> Greg plays a key role in opening the world to Meadow Park youth and their families. So this next award is called the Legacy Award, and it's given to someone who has, obviously, a legacy that we all want to honor and remember for the work, the efforts that they have put into this community or some aspect of this community. And I'm thrilled uh, to invite Jackie Gussie up here to uh, say a little bit about this year's winner. This honoree exemplifies the most admired characteristics of Mayo Clinic and Rochester's legacies which are intimately entwined. He promotes a caring environment for patients who come to Mayo and Rochester for hope and healing. He is one of Mayo Clinic's leading ambassadors and the institution's go-to person for historical and VIP tours, which are frequently requested by top leadership and local media. He underscores the primary value of Mayo Clinic, the needs of the patient come first, and his love of Rochester for tour participants from around the world. As chair of Heritage Days, Mayo's annual fall celebration, he has brought Mayo Clinic and Rochester's history to life through film documentaries, live productions, and publications. His leadership was key to the success of the Mayo Clinic Hope Fund, designed to meet patients' needs such as food, clothing, and lodging while seeking Medicare, medical care in Rochester. He recognizes the significance of the Mayo Carillon in Rochester as a historical artifact as well as a musical gift to the community. When the Carillon required specialized work to restore the lost chimes, he assembled a team to make it happen. He acquired the funding, obtained approvals, planned events to highlight the instrument, and worked with colleagues to share the story with the media. He serves as director of Mayo Clinic Heritage Halls and creates displays in the museum that celebrate the values and vision of Mayo Clinic that began with W.W. Mayo, the Sisters of St. Francis, and the historic tornado that forever changed Rochester and southern Minnesota. Museum displays link current activities with plans for the future. He was key to the historical development of the exhibit of Mayo Civic Center that you can see in the lobby during its significant expansion on the history of the facility and its impact on the community. His humble leadership style is quiet and compassionate. In all his interactions, he demonstrates the increasingly lost arts of etiquette, courtesy, and manners. His legacy in Rochester, both as a Mayo employee and community member, will be felt for generations. And personally, he hired me almost 25 years ago, and I am eternally grateful. Ironically, he will retire from Mayo Clinic in February 2024 after a 40-year career 
the same span as the Mayor's Medal of Honor. It is an honored and privileged to recognize Matt Dacey as this year's recipient of the Mayor's Legacy Award. fun. The next one's a, a special award because it's called the Mayor's Award, um, but the mayor isn't going to do the speaking on this one. She's going to invite up Jennifer Woodford, who is one of the nominators. Thank you, Mayor Norton. This honoree is dedicated to building better communities for all, and Rochester is a better place because she calls our town home. She has invested thousands of hours of expertise and leadership, not only as a psychiatrist and past CEO of Olmsted Medical Center, but as an officer and member of numerous local nonprofit organizations. She currently serves as a member of the Board of Trustees at Rochester Area Foundation, where her experience and perspective have been invaluable in advancing the foundation's impact as a leading philanthropic community organization in Greater Rochester. Her knowledge and insight into our core mission and values has led us to new levels of service and outcomes for our many diverse stakeholders. At the foundation, this honoree exemplifies our desire to engage partners who are willing to share their gifts of time, talent, and treasure with an organization. Her commitment to ensuring that each voice is heard and identifying ways in which the foundation can be successful is truly appreciated. But it doesn't stop there. With a deep conviction to serve those in need in our community, this honoree joined the inaugural Community Board of Trustees for Jeremiah Program's Rochester Southeast Minnesota campus in 2017 and served as the chair of their Community Board of Trustees in 2021 and 2022. Her leadership in governance, fundraising, and financial oversight, plus a deep understanding of issues of poverty, mental health, and equity, have been irreplaceable in strengthening their organization and community impact all during a time of extreme challenge at the tail end of a dual pandemic when GP was brand new, having opened the doors to its building in July of 2020. Her incisiveness and tireless work to disrupt poverty and relieve suffering in the everyday lives of our fellow citizens serves as a level of dedication and compassion most worthy of this prestigious award. And it continues. Her dedication to service within the community this honoree also serves on the board of the landing with a goal to provide a place for those in need and experiencing homelessness. The landing works to bridge the gap between people in need and a connection to services. Additionally, she coordinates Christ United Methodist Church's impactful Saturday noon meals program. She invests a significant amount of time leading an all volunteer team to offer a much needed vital meal each Saturday to those in need serving between 75 and 100 individuals who are food insecure. This honoree has also held several leadership positions in the Zumbro Valley Medical Society, a professional membership organization for physicians and physicians in training. Her service includes over eight years as a member of the executive committee, five years as a secretary as treasurer, one year as vice president, and a year as the president of their foundation. This honoree has a seemingly natural ability for the business side of a nonprofit organization, maintaining fidelity to bylaws, monitoring balance sheets, and leading working committees, while remaining unrelenting in her commitment to the dignity of and care for her patients and our community. One of our fellow nominators wrote that this honoree has dedicated her career and personal life to the betterment of others. Her leadership is what it truly means to invest in your community. It has been my honor to be part of this nomination, describing the dedication of Dr. Catherine Lombardo, an individual who is deeply invested in ensuring that our community has a breadth and depth of support in place to serve a diverse community. Congratulations, Dr. Lombardo.
the next awardee is unable to be here today, and it was the Personal Achievement Award. Um, I do have someone who's going to read the uh, nomination, I believe. Cheryl? Oh, yep, over there, Nicholson. Come on up, Cheryl. You can say a little bit about the person that you nominated that I had the pleasure of meeting yesterday. The honoree who can't be with us today but was visited by the mayor yesterday was a waitress at the Elks Lodge for many years. Everyone complimented her on being the best waitress in Rochester. She also worked very hard to help raise her family. At one point, she needed to find special education for her disabled daughter and others. She rode a bus to the Capitol in St. Paul to raise awareness for special education for the disabled in 1957. The state passed legislation that public schools statewide had to establish special education programs for children with many types of disabilities. The Federal Education of All Handicapped Children Act was not passed until more than two decades later in 1975. The honoree is a loving, caring mother who became co-founder of Possibilities in 1961. She has been a longtime advocate for people with disabilities. She was just recently honored at a Night of Possibilities as a guest speaker. Please join me in honoring Mrs. Lorna Schunke, a voice for people with disabilities for over 60 years. Thank you. And you can see how important it is for nominees to share stories about all the people that we've heard about. I had the pleasure of meeting Lorna yesterday, and um, she told me she was a waitress for 50 years. And um, I think it's safe to say we both were a little teary by the time the, the meeting was over, but it was delightful to meet her, and she just didn't feel well enough. She's 96, she's up and around, but she had a little bit of a cold and was a little worried about getting out in the cold. So it was a, it was a lovely day yesterday. Um, our next uh, category is Senior and Elder Award, and I would like Kathy Scheid, uh, who is the 2022 honoree, um, invite Kathy up yep, to read uh, the nomination. This honoree's tireless commitment and dedication beyond his work environment for the older population in Rochester is commendable. He makes and makes him a perfect example of selfless service to our community. He demonstrates an exceptional level of passion, creativity, and empathy in advocating for the welfare of our seniors and elder residents. His contributions have made a remarkable impact on the lives of countless individuals within our community. He is reputable, well-respected in Rochester, and he's built relationships with many leaders so that he's able to put into action plans that include seniors. He gives hope to our whole community that we are thinking and strategically planning for all of our futures. This honoree's efforts have brought essential attention to the unique needs of our seniors and elders, fostering an environment of inclusivity, accessibility, and respect. He has played an important role in bringing age-friendly communities to Olmstead County, and under his guidance has implemented initiatives that have improved the quality of life for many. He led a recent initiative that included Rochester's first and largest in the state age-friendly walk audit that evaluates accessible walkways, public spaces, and parks, and creates a barrier-free environment so that persons of all ages can participate fully. And I actually attended that. It was really fun, and we all learned a lot about our community and the needs. His exceptional communication skills have played a pivotal role in amplifying the senior independence programs that Family Service Rochester provides and age-friendly Olmstead County messages. 
His strategic marketing campaigns, community outreach, and partnerships have effectively disseminated information to our seniors and their families, ensuring that they are well informed about available resources and services. His tireless dedication to this cause has created a more informed and connected community. His outstanding contributions represent a commendable dedication to the betterment of our community. His selflessness, creative thinking, and commitment to enhancing the lives of our seniors and elders make him worthy of this award. This honoree embodies the spirit of service, empathy, and community building that the Mayor's Medal of Honor represents. His contributions to our community are immeasurable, and this award would be fitting to his exceptional service. Please help me to honor Mr. Dave Beal. down here. We have two special awards left to go. The next one is the Sustainability Award. And I will just say this was an uh, award that I added as mayor. Um, sustainability and resiliency, um, dealing with climate change has been um, an issue that I ran on. It's an issue I feel passionately about. And uh, we didn't have any way to recognize that as something new and different in our community. So this award, um, is, is our newest award, and we have uh, last year, 2022's honoree, Eric Noonan, here to read um, the nomination, and I welcome you to the stage. I invite you all to think, take a moment to think back to how you spent the final summer of your high school years, and I fully recognize that for some of you, it's a little further back than for others. Today's honoree, Aaron Ress, spent his summer attempting to retain a permanent voice of environmental awareness at the county level. He attended a week-long community organizing training to make sure an effort like that has a better chance in the future. And he joined the newly formed City of Rochester Sustainability and Resiliency Commission, on which he sits as the vice chair. The honoree put his skills to use, encouraging his peers to push for meaningful local climate legislation um, that would ensure none of our neighbors get left behind uh, on home energy efficiency rebates available through the Inflation Reduction Act. In his role with the John Marshall Environmental Club, he led efforts to register over 80 high schoolers to vote in last month's election. And from everything I've seen, he's only just getting started. My own generation graduated into the worst economic situation in almost 100 years. His will be graduating into a world that is already being defined by a far greater challenge. This year was the hottest ever recorded. We are in the midst of the largest uh, mass extinction event in human history. Due to climate change driven wildfires, our state had the worst air quality in the world this summer, more than once. Did that happen during the summer you thought back to? No, it's so easy to lapse into climate doomerism or apathy, and frankly, things will get worse before they get better. But when voices like Aaron's come forward with hope and optimism and real, tangible, informed solutions, we need to listen to them. This sustainability award is in recognition of his past efforts, and it can also be a rallying point an encouragement for us all to push for meaningful, impactful changes that will put the environmental realities on track to improve. Aaron, where are you? There you are. <laughs> all of the people who nominated you are incredibly proud of what, and impressed by what um, you have accomplished, and we're all looking forward to what your ch next chapter will be. Congratulations and thank you. So since he's so young, I said, you're going to have to save that medal for a really long time. And he's, he has his grandfather's, too, which is really cool for city service. So congratulations. And our last award today is Youth Serving Community Award. And I would invite Sarah Mache. Did I have that? There we go. Um, to come on up, uh, one of our nominators, uh, to read 
the description for us. Thank you. My name is Sarah Mache, and I'm a gifted education specialist for Rochester Public Schools. This honoree is the most remarkable student I currently have the pleasure of teaching. This is the second year I have been her teacher for the Rochester Public Schools Mentorship in the Community Program. Of all the students I've had while teaching for our school district, I consider this student to have had the most direct impact on our community. Not only is she passionate about many issues, but she is the kind of person who takes action. One of her main goals is working to eliminate social inequities in our community. And she does this in a variety of ways. Recently, she founded STEM Glow, a STEM mentorship program for girls of color in Rochester Public Schools that works to increase the engagement of BIPOC middle school girls in science research and participation in the Rochester Regional Science Fair. She has been able to build this program in part due to a grant from the Women's Foundation of Minnesota. This fall, my student spearheaded a $100,000 fundraising effort to save the Minnesota State Science Fair after it lost a major donor. This honoree is also a member of the Rochester Public Schools Curriculum Redesign Advisory Team, which is investigating how our K-12 curriculum can be improved to better reflect our diverse community, <clears throat> as well as how our district can attract and retain more teachers of color. She is also a member of the Rochester Olmsted Youth Council, the Rochester Community Initiative, and is the youth representative on the Olmsted County Community Council design team, where she is actively involved in advocacy for social justice issues. Apart from deep involvement in our community's work to address inequities, she is also passionate about public health initiatives directed towards improving the health of underrepresented community members. She assisted the Rochester Healthy Community Partnerships Healthy Immigrant Community Study and worked with the Mayo Clinic public health expert on a study assessing the impact of social determinants of health on preventive health screening. She is also one of two youth representatives on the Olmsted County Public Health Services Advisory Board. Last, this honoree is an exceptionally bright student and has twice represented Rochester at the International Science and Engineering Fair as a finalist. She has also won many awards for her science research and writing talents, including the Regeneron Biomedical Science Award and the Rochester Diversity Council's Martin Luther King Jr. Poetry Contest. Currently a senior at Mayo High School, I consider myself incredibly lucky to teach Ms. Isha Kapoor. I know she will continue to proudly represent Rochester in all her future endeavors. Thank you. I'm sure you had all done that by your senior year in high school, right? <laughs> Incredibly awesome. So we have come to the close of today's celebration. I hope you are as in awe of these recipients as I am. All of you wearing your medals, those of you who have them, I know one in her pocket, um, who have gotten them before, I want to say thank you for what you do for this community. We are who we are because of people like you who do the work that you do. And it is my hope, and you will hear me say this again, um, probably not in January at my State of the Union, we have to continue this sense of community, building community and working through the tough times, remembering that we have so much to be proud of and happy for in our lives and in our community as exemplified here by the folks who do such great work. So I noticed desserts haven't been touched by some of you, so if you have the time, please feel free to finish your desserts. 
Um, I want to thank you all for being here today. I want to say that the honorees and the nominees can take a poinsettia off the table uh, when they, they leave. And if there's any extras at the end, um, any late goers can take them because I can't possibly take these all home. So thank you all. Thank you to the, the winners of the awards today for all that you've done for our community. And have a wonderful holiday, everybody. Thanks.